Coming up on the sports desk. Hachoo! My allergies are really, really acting up. I'm being serious. We have South Baseball and West Softball highlights from the Diamond. Plus, Pioneer League play is officially underway on the hardwood. And I'm not talking basketball, folks. Oh, yeah, it's our first Torrance area matchup of 2016 in the volleyball world. Get comfy, everyone. All of this and so much more sauce is coming your way right now. What's up, everybody in the Twitter universe? Hit me up. That's at Colin Kushner using the hashtag BoomSauce. Yeah, buddy. Buddy healed this. Buddy healed that. The madness of March has been quite bad. And yeah, Buddy has been a huge part of it. I look forward to seeing what he can do the rest of the way. So the madness of March isn't all that's going down. There's also the Frozen Four. I realize that I am probably only one of seven hockey fans in the entire South Bay. For those of you that think the Frozen Four is a type of ice cream, you're wrong. It's actually college hockey's version of the Final Four. Did I mention the tournament also takes place in March and dips into my birthday month of April? Normally, big hits on the ice occur from the opposing team. Well, that wasn't the case when Michigan played North Dakota in the quarterfinals. North Dakota's Drake Kajula can tell us about it. Or better yet, since I'm a visual guy, he can show us. Off and running through the neutral zone into the offensive zone. Save! Score! Drake Kachula transition and the first goal of the game with a minute to go in the period. And Drake Kachula, he comes up the ice, takes a hard spill with the official celebrating. What speed by Drake Kachula to separate, go in, find his own rebound. Yikes. I give it a 10. If you do start watching the Frozen Four tourney, I suggest you wear a coat. It's going to be a frosty one. From the ice to the diamond, once upon a time, South and El Segundo used to both be a part of the fun I like to call the Pioneer League. After some tweaks, Gundo moved out and South stayed in. Their last four meetings together in the same league, South won all four. Now, El Segundo isn't in the Pioneer League anymore. And the Spartans are still scoring more runs than the Eagles. All the South Gunno action happened in the fifth inning. We left after the third. This should be an exciting highlight. Trevor Talpis on the mound for the Green Squad. South has won their last five against El Segundo, entering this one. Bottom one, no score. Nathan Critchett hit by a pitch. Critchett trots on over to first base. That was probably the most exciting part of the innings we were there. And then a few plays later, two on, two out for South. Critchett on third. James Prendergrass at the plate, and he flies out. The Spartans go on to score five in the fifth inning. We left after the third. Five nothing. Your final. whoop de doo That's South's sixth straight win over the Eagles. Hey, my mom's favorite number is six, or anything in multiples of six. 12, 18, 24. Yeah. Don't ask me about it. Ask her. That's at Rhonda Kushner on Twitter. Scoreboard. So the first round of the Redondo tournament didn't go over very well for the Spartans. Round numero dos was even worse. Hart plays with a ton of heart. They cross home plate 19 times and the 19 to 3 romping over South. It's a good thing it's early on in the season, folks, because that end result you see right now is not good. Coach Dan and Co. need to figure things out before the madness of Pioneer League play starts up, and that's really soon. Meanwhile, Ollie Turner and the rest of the Torrance baseball squad having an interesting time at the Anaheim Lions tournament. The Todd has dropped their first two games, but looks like three is a lucky number here as they grab their first dub of the tourney over a team that isn't even from California. The Anaheim Lions tourney rolls on, and hopefully so will the Tartars. Last year, the Easter Bunny was good of the Knights. They won their first two games of the St. Paul tourney this year. Same dealio. The Knights take care of business against Ontario Christian and John Glenn. The Knights cruising and still have a few more St. Paul games left. We'll see what they can do right now, though. Great start. We are still hanging on the diamond peeps. The West Bats came alive in their last game. They scored 15 runs against Hawthorne. One could say their run production dipped just a little bit, 
but their fat's still hotter than grandma's freshly baked cookies. Knuckles for everyone. West hosting the Cougars. Top one, no score. Melee Newman in the circle for the Warriors. And that is a strike out for Newman, her first of the game. She's heating up next batter. Uh, you can't stare that one down. Her second of the game, Newman in doing work. And then bottom one, still no score. One out, Micah Inglis slaps one to third. Mishandled, and Inglis is safe at first. Three batters later now, two on, two out for the Warriors. Bella Estrada, she do blaze to left. And that's gonna, ooh, misplay it and goes all the way to the fence. Mikey Inglis and Becca Chung score. West up two nothing. And the very next batter, Liz Gomez, singles right up Main Street. Estrada scores. The Warriors go up three nothing. They don't look back. 10 nothing is your final. We about to get cray cray, ladies and gentlemen. Between their two dubs over the Mustangs and Cougars, West has now crossed home plate 25 times in just two games. Woo! That's what I like to call run support. If you include their last two wins at the Torrance National Tournament, West has now won four straight games. They have outscored their opponents 38 to 11 during their hot like grandma's cookies at dub streak. Let's go to that other Torrance school, Todd and Nation. Follows in West's footsteps, a donut Centennial 10 zip. I tried looking through the history books to find out the last time Centennial scored more runs in Torrance. It's been a long, long, long time. Down the 405 freeway for about 45 minutes without traffic. The North Saxons doing work at the Allen Dugard Classic in my hometown of Irvine, California. Coach Miller and co. put up six runs in game numero dos, but my mom's favorite number and then from there, they allow my personal favorite, number one, against Milliken. But who cares? Because all that matters is that they snag another dub. However, they fall flat on their faces in game numero trace, the Allen Dugard Classic, falling to Orange Lutheran. North dropped into the gold consolation bracket. And we will have full results next week. Here's a history lesson for you. The recently retired Allen Dugard was a head coach at Woodbridge High School in Irvine for 24 years. That's my alma mater, by the way. He's in his 80s now, and while his coaching days are over, he still teaches English. Now that's wild. Still ahead, we have South and Torrance chilling on the volleyball court together. And when I say chilling, I don't mean that literally. One squad brought out the brooms, highlights and more coming at you in just a few. found every hazard out here today? Think again. The spot you missed could be a killer. That spot on your skin could be skin cancer. Fact is, if you're a man over 50, you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the kind that kills one person every hour. One in five Americans is likely to develop a form of skin cancer during their lifetime. That's why your best shot is to check for a spot. It's easy, follow through and check your skin. It could be the save of a lifetime. Go to spotskincancer.org to find out how. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. My new mom and I have a lot in common. <sighs> the great outside. We both love the outdoors. So shiny. That's not a flower. We both love geology. Oh, look, an igneous one. That's not a rock. And she knows a lot about wildlife. <gasps> a labradoodle. <laughs> That's not a dog. Hanging out has been kind of fun. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. <laughs> so Maddie, congrats on paying off all those student loans. Finally, right? How'd you manage that anyway? I started tracking my spending, changed a couple of habits. Wow. I'm kind of living paycheck to paycheck right now. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm doing it. Well, have you tried saving a little? <laughs> I want to, but where's that money going to come from? <laughs> Bill collectors, they're the worst. Am I right? When it comes to financial <laughs> stability, don't get left behind. Not at all. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. Welcome back, everybody. Don't forget to check out our Instagram page. That's the Sports Desk TV for sweet picks. 
video, and some awesome filters. Woohoo! Pioneer League play is officially underway on the volleyball court here in Torrance. I'm pumped. Are you? If you are, good work. If you are not, you better get jacked up. Todd of Boys Volleyball had a year to remember on the volleyball court last season. They finished Pioneer League play a perfect 10-0. Unfortunately, they followed up that performance and spiked the ball into the net, meaning they lost in round numero uno of the CIF Southern Section Division 2A tourney. Still a year to remember, though. South, on the other hand, last year, former North Saxon Aaron Saldana came aboard as their new head coach. And for the first time in a very long time, Torrance swept the season series with the Spartans. Crazy part of all of this is those were South's only two league losses. Now, I stand before you right now in 2016. It's a new season, new players, some returners, and South got back to their old ways against Torrance. Good for South, not good for Todd and Nation. Torrance is getting rowdy. South is going to get rowdy too. And well, what do you think I'm doing? I'm getting rowdy as well because that's what I do on the show. Set one, Torrance up two to one. Chase Sabalos. Ooh, a little scoop shot. All tied at two. Later in the first set, south up by one. Mayur uh, here for Torrance. That's a kill. Fours up. A few moments later, Torrance up seven to five at this point. Lots of back and forth action in set one. Troy Ellis gets the kill for south. South is only down by one. And then a, li a little bit later on, Torrance up by one here. Jared Kawai's shot gets blocked by Noah Doherty and Chase Sabalos. We're all tied up, folks. And then two plays later, Torrance goes back up. It's a two-point lead for the Totters, but South claws back. They take the 18-17 lead. The Spartans go on to take set one, 25 to 20, and the next two for the sweep of the Tartars. Wow, oh wow, oh wow. What a turn of events, folks. Talk about old habits. South gets back to their old ways against Torrance. And I'll tell you, that's a good thing for the Spartans. Bad for Tommy Tartar and company. It's the Green Squad's first win over Tartar Nation in two years and Torrance's first league loss since 2014. A majority of the American population enjoyed Pharrell's song, Happy. I don't know about you, but that song did the complete opposite for me. It made me very, very unhappy. Torrance unhappy too right now. Thanks for nothing, Pharrell. It's time for hashtag crunching the numbers on the volleyball court in the year of the monkey. For those of you unfamiliar with the Chinese calendar, that means 2016. Before falling to Torrance twice last year, South's last loss at the hands of the Tadas was 2009. Whoa, Avatar was the highest grossing film that year. And I thought that movie was absolutely terrible funny how that works out after getting swept by valley christian the west boys volleyball squad was in need of some inspiration it's a good thing losing her was in town because west has won two in a row over the olympians whoop de doo west hosting losing her the olympians have not had a ton of luck against the warriors set one seven four west up noah carroll a little tap back west extends their lead to four next play johnny vote for west Ace of clubs. Make that a five-point lead for the Warriors. And then a few plays later, Noah Carroll shows off the hops. He played basketball for West. The Warriors are up by my mom's favorite number, six. And the rest of the first set, all Warriors. They outscore losing her 15 to one. The rest of set numero uno, that was Noah Carroll. And then we're gonna have Matt Tsai. That's another point for West. Warriors take set one, 25, 25 to six in the match. Three sets to zero. Mom, they did it again. That's a good thing in this case. West has now won tic-tac-toe four in a row over the Olympians. Guess what? The Warriors have been gaining some weight because all three of those have been donuts, otherwise known to most normal people as a sweep. Rounding out your prep news from the hardwood, gotcha. Not basketball. We'll get to basketball in about 15 seconds. Bish Montgomery wins their third match in a row. The Knights decide to get some spring cleaning done against the Peninsula Panthers. Told you it would only be about 15 seconds on the hardwood. Tartar Girls basketball had a year to remember, just not on the hardwood. CIF recently announced their picks for the 30th annual Ford Academic Awards program. For enrollment, enrollment of 1,500 students and above, the Torrance Girls basketball program had the highest cumulative GPA 
a 3.76. I could have used some of their GPA points back when I was in high school. Congrats, Tartar Nation. And a special thanks to Jordan Sakasagawa for hitting me up on Twitter and uh, letting me know. Staying on the hardwood between both the boys and girls last year, five Torrance area basketball programs captured CIF Southern Section titles. This season, not so much. Out of all five high schools between the boys and girls, the West girls were the only squad to make a CIF Southern Section title game. It's a, sh it's a shame they forgot how to shoot. Sure, the end result wasn't good, but hey now, a championship game is a championship game. The Haley's, sophomore Haley Jones and senior Haley Tanabe, the only two Warriors named to the all-CIF Southern Section Division I AA basketball team. West lost in the CIF Southern Section Division I AA finals and made it all the way to the second round of state play. On the boys' side, same deal, just one team. Juniors Ethan Thompson or E-Money and Jordan Shackle both represent the black and gold on the CIF Open Division Southern Section squad. Coach Mitchell and company lost in the CIF Open Division Southern Section semis to Sierra Canyon in the state regional finals against the Ball Bros in uh, Chino Hills. Speaking of North, it's been about two months since five-star recruit Mike Juarez decided to take his football talents to UCLA. Juarez was just so excited about the next step that he graduated from North early so he could get the next chapter of his life underway. And as much, much as it pains me to say it, that next chapter is finally here. Mike took to Twitter to share the love. He had four memorable years as a Saxon, and the UCLA Bruin had no problem sharing how much his alma mater meant to him. He ended his message with, quote, Gosh, I'm going to miss those Friday night games with a sad face emoji, end quote. Fours up, Mike. Fours up. Still ahead on the volleyball court, the Elko men's squad looks to even the score with Moore Park College. Oh, God. The highlights are coming your way after the break. Get your popcorn ready. Something's not right. My first symptoms were constant tingling in my toes, my legs. Sometimes I'll go numb. I had double vision. They said you have multiple sclerosis. Well, the beginning is the hardest time. Kind of had to get a grasp on reality. I had to adapt and change very rapidly. We had to learn how to drive with my hands. Yeah, that was interesting. I was a dancer. I don't see walking the way I walk any different than doing a dance. It just looks different. It's a different dance. You see me have an off day. It doesn't take away from who I am. A symptom may cause you not to be able to do that anymore. And at one point, I wasn't able to do any of those. But I would exercise every day. Since I've been cycling, it's definitely helped my walking. To make a lot of changes in my life and just adapt to it. I'm going to acknowledge its presence. I'm not going to discount it. But at the same time, I'm going to try my best to not let it stop me. It's a fantastic opportunity to be working together with a common goal of carrying MS. And sharing is the key. You always made sure I brushed my teeth. You told me that smart was cool. You always told me to dream big. To all of those parents who took the time to make raising their children their most important job, we'd like to say thank you. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thanks, Mom and Dad. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. If you're like most families, you probably have video game fans in your home. But not every game is right for every kid, which is where the ESRB ratings come in. They help parents make informed decisions for their kids. And there's an easy-to-use mobile app that gives you detailed info on specific game ratings. Video game consoles have parental controls that you can set to block certain games by age rating. So they get all the fun, and you get peace of mind. Welcome back. Twitter me this, Twitter me that. If you hit me up on Twitter with pics and video, I'll get you right here on the show. In order to get the sweep in volleyball, you must win three straight sets. Elko has done that twice this year, and with a win, they can make it a third time, which ironically is the same number for a sweep. After getting swept by Santa Monica College, Elko men's volleyball decided to play the opposite game against the Raiders, not from Oakland. Josh Rivlet hanging. He has red hair just like my brother. Elko 
trying to get the season split with Moore Park set one to all. And of course, we're going to start it off with the man, the myth, the legend himself, Josh Riblet. That's a kill, one of his 11. Elko on top, 3 2. Later in set one, the Warriors up 10 9. And that's another point for Elko. They go up by two. And then set point here in the first, Peter Nordell, the other redhead. Elko takes the first set 25 to 17. And then let's hang out and chat things over in between sets because we need to catch our breath, relax, maybe get a massage if possible or not. Second set was just like the first, all Elko, all Elko. Pedro Campos, one of his 11 kills and a few plays later, Pedro Campos, except he goes a little easier on the spike. Elko up by three, they take the second set and a third for the sweep over Moore Park College. Let's play the opposite game because that's what we do occasionally. Elko gets swept by Santa Monica College, but then comes right back and takes out all their anger on the Raiders. Not from Oakland. The Warriors banana split the season series with Moore Park and have now won one game in a row. Yay. John Featherstone out as Elko's head football coach, plus Gifford Lindheim in as the new general equals a brand new state-of-the-art facility. Well, the new stadium has been underway well before Feather called it a career and Lindheim wasn't even a thought. Do you know, do you want to know what the new Murdoch looks like? Well, so do I. Elko's just under $40 million stadium is nearing completion. ECC Warriors on Twitter shared some pics as a new state-of-the-art facility begins to look like an actual state-of-the-art facility. The project began a while ago now and is scheduled to be jam-packed with crazy fans this fall. It's time to offer up, folks. Give me your best offer and maybe I'll sign with you or not. Former West Warrior standout Ray Lima is collecting some nice offers from some big boy Division I college football programs. Lima tortured opposing quarterbacks this past year with seven sacks, 59 tackles, and a side of French toast, or just three forced fumbles. The Elko first year is getting looks, and so are some of Lima's fellow freshman bros, like wide receiver William Morehand, who has an awesome last name. He led the Warriors receiving core this past season with over 800 yards and seven touchdowns. Morehand recently committed to that other, other Arizona school, NAU, according to JucoFootballFrenzy.com. Lastly, cornerback Dewan King is taking his defensive talents to Indiana State U. He better grab his fur coat. It's going to be brr, cold. Tyson finished up his first year at Elko with one interception, one forced fumble, and uh, 44 tackles. We already know the madness of March has been quite mad. Mad scientists mad. There have been ups, downs, laughs, ha, 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 and dropping dimes without a shoe. No shoe, no problem for Syracuse's Tyler Lydon. He loses his shoe and still drops a three-pointer. I think Lydon needs to watch Big Daddy loop it, swoop it, and pull big guy. That's awesome. I don't care who you are or what you say. Handshakes are cool, whether it's that or maybe some knuckles. You can be seven years old or 97 years old. They're cool. Up in Walla Walla, Washington, Whitman College assistant coach Stephen Garnett has a special handshake with each of his players. So I did the math. That means 15 complex handshakes. Check it out. The video shows Garnett in action with the fellows. Each handshake is customized and personalized to that particular player. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. And if you aren't impressed, you should be. For those of you that can't remember someone's name, think twice about that. Garnett has taken the time to learn 15 different handshake combos. Wow, wow, wee wow. Unfortunately, Whitman lost in the NCAA Division III version of the Madness of March to the University of St. Thomas, 99-73. Handshakes don't necessarily guarantee wins, but they do guarantee smiles all around. I'm smiling right now, too. I might have to move up to Walla Walla just so I can have a handshake with Coach G. Well, that wraps up another saucy show. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And remember, if you just want to say what's up or chat about sports, you can do that as well. Take it easy, Torrance. We'll catch you next time.